Hello team, welcome to the brand new 2023 Moto Guzzi V100 Mandela. Moto Guzzi's big step forward in the game, modernising, loaded with technology, but still maintaining that Moto Guzzi special characterful look about it. Sports tourer bike, let's see how she rides, see what it's all about. So guys, here she is, the long-awaited V100 Mandela. First off the bat, a huge thank you to Dearden Motorcycles for lending me the bike for today. Very generous of them. If you're in the market, guys, and you want to test ride the V100 Mandela, come down to Dearden here, just in the New Forest, and I'm sure they will hook you up with a ride. What have we got here? There's two models. You have the standard Mandela and the S model. Today we have the standard in this rather fetching white color color here with the gold rims which I think immediately stand out to me look really nice single-sided swing arm on the rear shaft drive of course being Moto Guzzi very keen on the shaft drive and for a sports tourer a massive massive benefit I think that's one of the big benefits of the uh, Guzzi bike and just look at that wheel a work of art that stunning so the standard model coming in at thirteen thousand five hundred pounds if you opt for the s model you're getting up to fifteen thousand seven hundred and fifty now the differences between the two the s model you are basically you're getting a quick shifter semi-active electronic olins suspension and heated grips so that's what you're getting extra whether you want that or not entirely up to you but uh today we're on the standard and we'll we'll see how she rides so straight off the bat what are we getting a brand new 90 degree transverse v-twin from motor Guzzi. so you've got the classic transverse v-twin from Guzzi, which which just exudes character so nice to ride but this really is a brand new motor all together so putting out 115 horsepower and 105 newton meters of torque oh wow that's a lot meatier than i was expecting okay so what we're going to do i'm just going to go for a ride we'll stop later and go over figures and specs etc but let's just go for a ride and get an initial feel for the bike first off the bat i don't know if you can see it still retains that slight shunt to the side from the uh, transverse V-twin, which is classic of Guzzi. It's not as pronounced as the V7 and older models. It's slightly more refined than that. But first off, that is much meatier than I was expecting, the engine. That's lovely, really characterful. Meaty motor. Meaty, that's my technical term. <laughs> Oh yeah, so it still retains plenty of character initially, no worries there. So Guzzi have highly modernised this engine and the whole bike, however immediately you're still getting that character from the Motor Guzzi do so well. Nice uh, positive gear shifter, not incredibly light like a Triumph, it's slightly heavier than that, I'd say a mid-weighted clutch and gear lever. She's throbbing away. So, immediately jumping on, uh, riding position. This is a sports tourer. It's not an adventure bike, guys. Sports tourer, maybe similar to sort of the Yamaha Tracer 900, really, is what I was thinking is really its closest competition. This feels smaller than that, lower down. The handlebars are actually quite sort of narrow and really road focused. I was expecting this to be slightly more of an adventure bike style riding position, but it's not at all. It's very much sports touring. See how she overtakes briefly. Oh yeah, so that engine's got a considerable amount more of grunt than any other Moto Guzzi I've ever ridden. So you've got a lovely TFT screen with really all of the bells and whistles to be honest, which is rare for a Moto Guzzi. Very nice. Right, I'm going to ride her a bit more and then we'll catch up in a sec, let you know how, I, how I've got on. of character is what I'm getting at so far. An Italian beauty. So we're in the new forest today, spectacular place to ride, but you do have to watch out for uh, horses crossing the road. So guys, 
guys, that engine, 115 horsepower and 105 newton meters of torque. Still a V-twin, so you are very much still getting a characterful motor from uh, Guzzi, but you can definitely tell with this engine that is more refined and updated than, than previous Moto Guzzi V-twins. It feels much meatier, for sure, more refined, yet in a way it's still got a lot of character there and a nice thrum from it to separate it from, from the pack from other traditional sports tourers like the Tracer 9, the Ninja 1000 and the Suzuki S1000 GT just for an example. And yeah, it's really, really come up um, in specifications wise. It can keep up with the rest of the pack now. We'll go in a ride in a bit and really sort of give it a proper thorough riding test, but let's just go over some specs first. So quickly suspension, course bright looking into the sun. On this standard model, you've got 41 millimeter upside down forks up front with preload and rebound damping adjustable. Adjustable on the top of the forks in a traditional manner, not electronic suspension. Come on to the rear suspension. Rear suspension, you have a monoshock, on the left hand side of the bike with preload and rebound damping adjustable on the twist knob here in a traditional manual manner. Okay, so onto the brakes. Now the brakes do remain the same on the standard and the S model. You're getting two 320 millimeter discs with a four piston Brembo caliper radially mounted brakes. And you're also getting a Brembo master cylinder up on the lever as top as well. So yeah, some real top premium brakes up front. Move to the rear. Single 280 millimeter disc with a two piston Brembo caliper. We shall get onto the brakes on the road in a minute, tell you how they feel. Whilst we're here on the rear, as I mentioned earlier, single sided swing arm uh, shaft drive, so no chain maintenance, which is very nice, I think, for these, you know, sports, tourers, adventure, whatever you like to call them, motorcycles for your longer distance. You just don't have to worry about that chain maintenance to the uh, motorbike. Seat height and weight, so seat height, 815 millimeters. So yeah, it's a, I'm five foot nine with a 32 inch inseam. I could just about comfortably uh, flat foot it. So it's very much, as I was saying, more towards seat height wise, the Kawasaki 1000 SX and the new Suzuki 1000 GT. It's lower to the ground and very much more road focused. And seeing the bike in person, it is a smaller bike than I was expecting actually. I was expecting a larger, bulkier, you know, sports tourer with bigger fairing at the front. It's a smaller bike, this. Very pretty, but uh, yeah, they've managed to squeeze that prettiness <laughs> into smaller dimensions, but we'll get on the road and see what the wind protection, etc., is like in a bit. Wet weight is 233 kilograms. Pretty standard in this class, very similar to the Tracer 900 GT. It's a nicely weighted bike. You can, the benefit of when you're riding is you can feel where that weight is, it's the engine the V-twin, the 90 degree V-twin. I like to sometimes say the handling on these Guzis is slightly similar to a BMW Boxer with that weight nice and low down, you can almost pivot it over the engine. Whether that's just in my head and I'm imagining it, I'm not sure, but it does slightly feel like that. But weight-wise, no groundbreaking figures here for weight-wise, pretty standard for this, for this category. Nice and easy to maneuver around as well whilst you're stationary. Okay guys, so I hope you like the, uh, that sound clip there. You can tell the exhaust and the engine, this is a really nice sounding bike, a really standout feature actually. Now one thing I feel I should mention, because it is the first on any motorcycle ever, active aerodynamics. If I speed up to 40 miles an hour and you keep an eye down here. Good God. <laughs> so you've got two little winglets here that pop out automatically if you're in rain or road mode and they come out at 43 miles an hour and basically what Gutsy is saying is it's directing airflow around the rider. Now I've got to be honest I can't say if I'm actually feeling it too much however I love the idea of it and I, I, to be honest, when I first got on the bike I completely forgot about it and I was just riding and they thought, see they've just popped back in so when you go below a certain speed, I believe it's 20 miles an hour, don't quote me on that, they go back in as well. So they're fully automatic, you don't have to do anything to them. But I think that's a nice feature, along with that you have an electrically adjustable uh, screen up front here so if I just hit right on the right toggle. Ah, oh, there go the wings again. It's a flawless system, they work very well. I mean, don't even notice it. 
and I popped the screen up electronically. That is the screen at its highest setting, and I would say that is, it's not a high screen. I'm very easily looking over the screen, but the wind, wind protection and wind flow off it is very clean, very undisruptive. So yeah, good, good wind protection. So what's she like on the twisties? Where well, you're having a little bit more fun? Let's find out. Oh, that motor's just throbbing away there, real standout feature. So the roads, as you can see, are slippy today, not ideal. I would describe this engine as it's more, it's torquier, it's the torque that's the figure. It's not a Tracer 9 GT motor, and it's certainly not a, a four cylinder in line four from Kawasaki or Suzuki, which I think it, it is a good thing really from Gutsy, because that's what you're expecting. You're still getting your, your classic V twin. It's just slightly more refined now, and it's got a lot of grunt low down. I just want to find out if there's much to be had higher up in the rev range. Hopefully we can get it here. It's a fast bike. It's plenty quick enough, not lacking power, but it's really not a, a massively exciting engine and higher up in the rev range, it does start to, you start to feel it being a V-twin. However, where you're really using that power, it's just lovely. It's, it's got, got plenty of power in that usable low down rev range. So guys, you've got uh, four rider modes, ride by wire. So um, you have rain, touring road and sport oh some nice roads here all right, it's all about the torque this engine all about that low down grunt it's very nice yeah i'm starting to feel it now it's a nice lovely proposition this motor for some uh, sports touring some meaty grunt down low it pulls it really does slow down a bit some donkeys some asses yeah also you have a six axis imu so you've got cornering traction control and abs it's really good see have really loaded hello donkeys full tech it's a fully modern bike tech wise completely up there with any other manufacturer now really so a big big step forward Gutsy have made here and it really shows it really does show riding the bike now one thing I want to mention is the handling. The roads aren't ideal so I've not been able to, to push it today but the turn-in just feels like, I can tell it's, it's a sweet handling bike this. It's good, really traditional, not too high up, nice and low down, nice sort of swept back handlebars. It's got a nice amount of go, really lovely, lovely powered balanced engine for road use, realistic road riding. You can just play with that torque, it is reminiscent of a Boxer, the Beamer. Yeah, like I say, the handling is it's just got that tra traditional sports tourer balance and handling style about it. It's really lovely for just sort of carving up long sweeping bends. Very impressed with the handling. So I think Guzzi, Gutsi have done a really good job with this bike, modernizing it and bringing it up level with its equivalent sports tourers, I really do. In classic Gutsi style, it's not the fastest sports tourer, it's not the most refined, but then that is part of Gutsi's charm. You have that V-twin there, but they have done some great work with this engine and you can really notice the difference. Highly recommend it, it's a great fun bike. On that note, Let's go stop and I'll tell you what I think of the bike overall. Just before we do, quickly mention, of course, being a sports tourer, you can spec through Gutsy, panniers, top box, and the pannier mounting system is actually really nice. It's already integrated into the bike. There are those panniers that just slip on. It's not a big sort of ugly rack, etc. It's not a load of scaffolding. Very sleek, very nice system with the panniers. Also, the bike comes standard with cruise control. Like I say, if you get the S model, you get a quick shifter, heated grips, and the uh, electronically adjustable Olin suspension. Right, thoughts overall of the V100 Mandelo. I think Motor Gutsy have made, finally, 
uh, made a massive step forward in technology to catch up with the rest of the, the market, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki, etc. BMW. Yet, they've done a great job to keep the Mandelo maintaining its gutsy character from that V-twin and the rest of the bike. Let's just touch on that. We haven't mentioned the styling of the bike. I'm not gonna get carried away. Looks are a subjective thing. I don't think it's an absolutely stunning motorcycle. However, the more I've ridden it and been with it for the whole day, it has just grown on me more and more. And that's leading on to my overall point of this bike, which I haven't mentioned. Oh, I've had to get my sunglasses out for the first time in months. What gorgeous day for a test ride. <laughs> the overall point about this bike, it's not the fastest sports tourer. Tech-wise, it's very much up there now. But the overall feeling, honestly, the way it makes you feel riding this bike, it just feels like a different proposition than your run-of-the-mill sports touring motorcycle. You just feel like you're on something a little bit different, a little bit special when you're riding around your favourite roads, which is a lot to be said and not to be sniffed at for a motorcycle, because a lot of motorbiking is all about how it makes you feel. Very impressed with the V100 Mandelo. Any downsides? There's not many. Perhaps for a sports tourer, if you're on the larger side, dimensions wise, you might want a slightly larger bike, but that's really down to size and personal preference. You have to uh, get out there, give it a test ride for yourself. But yeah, great to ride the future. And I think this engine will be used quite a lot in different forms by Gutsy in the future. So yeah, very, very promising motor. And yeah, well done Gutsy for uh, bringing everything back up to the modern day. Many thanks for watching. Stay happy, keep riding. See you in the next one. Ciao Bella. Also, on that note guys, bit of a premature ciao bella there. Merry Christmas to you, have a lovely Christmas. And also, sport mode is where it's at on this bike. Pop her into sport mode and it really brings that engine alive. You can feel all of the work they've done on the motor. Really makes it a uh, yeah, great, great fun bike and a lot peppier. Just one to mention, thought I'd leave you with that. Beautiful bike. Merry Christmas. Ciao bella for a second time.